Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is, surprisingly enough, yet another episode of uh, the legendary Iron Man Army of Two run, where we are trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty with only two and two soldiers only. Our Sky Ranger just simply doesn't have enough room for more than two soldiers. Uh, tough life. We could have uh, done something about it, but uh, apparently XCOM just wants to operate in small teams, and that's good. We are about to um, infiltrate this alien facility. It's our first time that we are actually taking matters into our own hand. There is a large um, threat uh, within this mission, an alien ruler, but with uh, the team of Dragonover and Edgar Alien Poe, I feel highly, highly confident that this beautiful mission without a timer will not be a problem at all. In other words, we are going to pretty much cheese our way through the entire mission. We have all the time in the world. And uh, Dragonova will spot everything out. Uh, we are then going to finish, slowly but surely, with Edgar Alien Poe and kill everyone sounds about right easy enough <laughs> let's see if uh if it's going to be that easy the alien ruler is most likely going to be uh, the snake lord and if uh, that is true you might want to be a bit cautious and not be spotted out All right, two men against the world. Menace one five. Target coordinates are locked in. Move to designated position and place the X four charges. So we got a beautiful large area. Almost no I go where you tell me. cover. That sounds like a great idea. And we just spotted out the first pick. Uh, let's position ourselves a bit further away. There is yet another pack. There's an alien patrol nearby. Pick of three soldiers here. And a specter slash Andromedon pack. I think we are starting with the Spectre uh, pack. This here could be a solid kill. If not, Dragonova is going to kill it. Easy enough. All right, we know that this guy is slowly but surely trying to move into the direction of Edgar Elliot Poe. Might as well sting him. Not so much to really deal a lot of damage, more so to remove some of the armor. There we go. These guys are alerted. And that's okay. Oh, so close. Come on, can we throw it just a bit further? Damn, we can't. That's a bummer. Because hitting four with the grenade would have been worth it. Can we somewhat get a bit further? Sometimes um, you can squeeze out just one more square with using odd movements in the back, using the mouse wheel to uh, go to a higher level. It doesn't work always, and in this case it seems to not work, but it's a little trick sometimes 
we can try to get this extra just mini edge out of it doesn't work here clearly so instead we're going to reload and we're going to continue to hammer this guy Dragonova, wait a second, if this is only 5 points of damage, we can easily kill this guy. There we go. It's now moving back even further. Let's use this round to reload. We're moving up just a bit. So we could theoretically engage on that pack. And we're just waiting for now. Nice. The Andromedon just places the entire uh, ground um, and plasters it with acid. That's so beautiful. Placing the weapon. Because now, when we pull everyone, it's going to be even easier. They can run through the acid and just hurt themselves even more. Burning acid, perfect. Love it. Let's see if we can kill... Wait a second. You know, the the only problem that I'm seeing is Dragonova really has a poor position here, okay? And the one thing that I don't want is her to be spotted out. Okay. Which in this case means actually moving here and just overwatching for Edgar Lee and Poe. They potentially don't know where Edgar is. The Andromedon should die. Easy peasy. Dragonova moves up. And 95% is not 100%. So we're just reloading for now. Those guys here take acid burn. <laughs> wow, the AI really fucked that up. Moving just a bit further away. Now the chances to hit are too low, so I'm not going to do it. Like I said, only secure kills. I would want to get uh, the uh, loot though. So maybe we're going just a little bit closer here. The main idea is not to be spotted out.
Oh, and there is the alien ruler. Interesting. We're certainly not going to engage the Viper King. Like, that's a given. Reload and Overwatch. All right, the Viper King does not yet know what's up. I'm on the move. Moving to get the loot. Well, advanced laser sight is not so fantastic. Still good enough. And that's two packs down, and we're still okay when it comes to um, our resources. All right, let's uh, slowly but surely advance, I would say. We're not going to Overwatch because I don't want uh, the potential missed chance of an Overwatch. I much rather want uh, the alien, uh, the alien ruler to be spotted out on our turn. But before doing so, Let's just make sure we are doing some homework, i.e. clearing the towers. Nice little shots. We're going to go back here. Let's just pistol overwatch. Uh, that won't trigger from the distance. This uh, cheeky alien ruler is moving. I am trusting you. We would be looking at a seventy. 3% chance to hit it. Should we go for an overwatch? I mean, that's a good question. 
if we're not going for an overwatch it anyways doesn't have tactical analysis so that piece is redundant it'll get a turn whenever we had a turn so might as well use overwatch we're very far away come on hit it unfortunately no hit Let's first of all remove its armor. There we go. That's a hit. We're continuing with a very solid shot. Fortunately, not a crit. Target position in this case is not super relevant. The Viper, however, is pretty relevant. Fortunately, we don't have a remote start yet, and I don't see an option of going for a remote start either. Hmm. We're not getting a great crit chance as long as it is in cover. In the meantime, this here should be sufficient damage. Nice little crit. Okay, so that's just one shot that we could take. We can take it or leave it. It's, I, I would say, a solid shot to get it down to 30-ish hit points. Not revealed, even better. All right, not the worst. Overall, pretty solid. We know there is one more sector pot. So, might as well position ourselves a little bit closer. We have all of the time in the world, so I'm not going to use the grappling hook here. Because maybe I can use it in case of a dangerous situation. Okay, we're positioning ourselves in a pretty solid high ground position here. Seeing no enemies. Let's plant the C4. Menace 
Status confirmed. X4 charges are armed. Move to the extraction point for immediate evac. Menace 1 5, be advised. We've picked up hostile reinforcements inbound on your position. My natural habitat. Moving as ordered. Alright, we can still just simply call the Sky Ranger. No need to be worried now. Maybe we can get some bonus XP. Well, maybe we need to call the Sky Ranger this turn. I don't want to take any chances. <clears throat> and we have already successfully finished the mission. Alright, let's see if we can still hurt uh, those guys just a little bit. Maybe we can pick up a couple of kills depending on our RNG here. Most likely not. Not sure how long the Sky Ranger actually needs to cool down. Still cooling down, let's see. Okay, the Sky Ranger is done cooling down. Shield should be almost gone by now. I was about to say that. Yes, good. So, if we're getting visible again, that's fine. If we're becoming visible again, that's fine. Your will join you if we're just killing them, that's fine, of course, as well. 
They haven't spotted us out yet. Although it's quite obvious where she would be sitting. Let's see if we can hit another lucky shot. Yeah, he still had sustenance. Too bad for us. We would have killed him. All right. Yeah, I absolutely love uh, non-timed missions. You can uh, pull out all of the shenanigans that you could usually not do in timed missions. And by the way, this mission is a great example why they originally started putting in timed missions. Because you can argue all the uh, all uh, you want, but Dragonova plus a couple of snipers is a bit of, uh, is a bit fucked up combination. Imagine you actually have a couple of snipers sitting in the background. I doubt we've seen the last of Farwin's little experiment, Commander. And I've really not even used uh, their double shot yet. The alien facility now stands in ruin, Commander. Excellent work. Should have probably used their double shot by thinking about it. Anyways, we reduced the Avatar project by one. That's good. We started uh, the Alien Ruler. So in probably two missions from now, maybe three, the Alien Ruler will show. And that's okay. Because uh, we just need to hit it and uh, get it down to kind of one third of its HP. <sighs> that is not optimal. <laughs> Shit, yet another... VIP mission. Scientist is great. 104 Intel. Awesome. Thank you. But what is the game trying to tell us? We just had the VIP mission. Then we're doing another um, facility and we're yet going for another mission. Well, screw you, game. We can't ignore it. So realistically, what are our options? Uh, Edgar, Alien, Poe, and Outrider? Mm -mm, not going to happen. So we're looking at Zirkim and Roby, right? Right? I mean, they're not even a team. But we could also cancel the negative trade removal from Ranven. We we're almost through. Hmm. Bad timing, man. Really bad timing. I wish Hogbite would be done with this covert ops, uh, ops mission. Roby and Hogbite, perfect uh, team for a big fat um, rescue the VIP mission. But probably we're going to end up with uh, Zirkim and uh, Roby. Zirkim, the only one who hasn't got a weapon upgrade yet because heavy weapons haven't been researched. If I'm not mistaken, our breakthrough for improved assault rifles has just started, so that's not happening either. Anyways, we're going to see that in the next mission. Let's not um, let's not overthink that now. I'll prepare the mission, and we're going to see each other in just a couple of days. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like it and uh, subscribe. Slash, uh, leave a comment down below. Thank you so much, and have a great evening. Bye bye.